2023 FIBA World Cup was one of the most unpredictable ever. We saw favorites to win fall early, underdogs winning with newly discovered gems and dramatic game endings till the very final. You might have seen it on our channel before, but during the tournament we did extensive recaps of every round, so this video will go only through the biggest World Cup highlights, starting with the first group stage. The match between Dominican Republic and the hosts broke the attendance record with 38,000 fans in the stands, and the game itself did not disappoint either. 24 points so far in the game, and Jordan Clarkson bumps in the lane, and now he's got 26! Right from the start we saw a surprise in Group E, where one of the tournament favorites, France, looked hopeless and were crushed by Canadians by 30 points. I guess this was our first red flag from the French, but more on them later. Also, the first game for Slovenia showed why they'll need all the Luka magic, since Doncic had to score 37 points to beat Venezuela. And of course, he was doing it in style, dishing out crazy no-look assists. Doncic, shoulder down, head down. Extra pass oh. made his buddy Toby. Before the tournament, I expected China to advance with slow-mo leading the way, but oh my was I wrong. Kyle Anderson's debut for the Chinese national team ended with 0 points on 0-9 shooting in 26 minutes of play and losing by 42 against Serbia. Team USA also had their first taste of the World Cup and New Zealand's Haka. After struggling in the first quarter, it wasn't long before they figured it out and won by 27 points. Anthony Edwards blamed what happened in the first on some lotion. What's different about the ball? I don't know, man. I think because I put lotion on right before the game, yeah, I was, I was kind of fucked up. Another Timberwolves star, Carl Anthony Towns, was balling in the World Cup for the Dominican Republic. In fact, he played so well that he managed to pull his team to a comeback win versus Italy, even making the Italian head coach Gianmarco Posecco lose his mind and get ejected. I think he's looking for Giannis Antetokounmpo right now to jump on him and say I love you, but... While you could have expected Australia-Germany to be the game deciding the winner of Group E, the fact that Franz Wagner was out due to an ankle injury made the Aussies clear favorites. Boomers have FIBA Mills, but the Germans have FIBA Schroeder, who went off for 30 points, many of them coming in the clutch. And this one is oh, over! Was he fouled? Was he fouled? The most emotions came in Okinawa, where to everyone's surprise, host Japan managed to come back from an 18-point deficit against Finland. Even more surprisingly, Yuki Kawamura proved that height is just a number, as the 172cm guard went off for 25 points and hit clutch threes. Company up by six. And when it comes to emotions, just look at how this win affected the Japanese fans. Remember when I said that the French were raising red flags before? Well, the Latvians proved why those concerns were real. France couldn't afford a loss and had a 12-point advantage coming into the third, but Porzingis-less Latvia came back and sent France to prepare for the Olympics. Francisco, he has a look, and it's off the rim, and Latvia wins! I bet the French Basketball Federation president Boris Diaw was already on the phone with Joel Embiid after this game. The most heartwarming story happened in Japan, as the smallest country of the tournament, Cape Verde, managed to win their first ever game in World Cup's history. And congratulations, Coach Emmanuel Tuavada, Walter Tavash. Meanwhile, Rondé Hollis Jefferson channeled the Mamba mentality by first getting everyone up from their seats with a malicious dunk. Nice bounce pass! Holy cow! And then sending the game to the overtime with a 3 plus 1 play. He's definitely gonna put it up. The 3 is fouled! You cannot be serious! In a post-game interview, Rondé said that Kobe was with him during this game. Coming down the stretch, hitting those big shots, God was with me and Kobe was with me for sure. The most anticipated match for Team USA in the first group stage was against Greece. But the biggest highlight wasn't the fact that USA blew out Greece by 28 points. Instead, it was this. So, Paolo Banquero. But create good shots together. takes Papiannis out with a minute to go. Well, he's upset about what's happening on the... Even Team USA players started playing along. USA. 
I also want to point out that Germany finished undefeated in their group, beating Lauri Markkinen's Finland by 26 points in the last game. I'm not sure what happened to Finland, but I think Markkinen only making 3 3-pointers out of 20 in the group stage explains some of it. Then the Philippines battled for their first win until the last seconds again, but ended the group stage 0-3. Interestingly, Filipino fans were booing their team's head coach even before the game, which Jordan Clarkson found really weird. It seemed like we were close to yet another surprising exit. New Zealand had an 11-point lead against Greece coming into the halftime, which made some of the Greek fans really stressed. Greek fans can barely stand to watch, we're oh. so early. Fortunately for them, they came back in the second half and won their ticket to the next stage. So, Greece joined 15 other teams who made it to the next round of the FIBA World Cup. The second group stage of the FIBA World Cup 2023 immediately began in a dramatic fashion. I don't know what's going on with Serbia, but the Italians might be their kryptonite. Almost in the exact same fashion as they did in Eurobasket 2022, Italians managed to come back with a series of threes and erased a 16-point lead. Another rebound, GG, corner, takes it, oh baby! We were close to another surprise, but the Montenegro USA box score doesn't necessarily show it. This was without a doubt the toughest challenge for the Americans and Anthony Edwards so far. Ant went scoreless through the first two quarters, but showed why he is the man for this team by scoring 17 points after. And that was a quick three, it doesn't drop. Oh, look at that, can you believe it? Even more so, Lithuania Greece box score really doesn't tell the true story of the game. In the first half, Greece were looking sharp and managed to win it by 4 points. But the Lithuanians really leveled up their offense and defense, winning the second half 53 to 24. Dimsha got another. Well, they just Germany's victory over Georgia made the game between Slovenia and Australia even more significant for the Aussies as it now meant that they had to win or they would go home. Unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize on Luka Doncic getting his fourth foul with eight minutes left in the third quarter, despite Josh Giddy going off. Giddy driving left this time, and one! Slovenia upsetting Australia, the favorite here in the tournament. Well, at least they got a direct ticket to the Olympics and maybe we'll see Ben Simmons in Paris? Probably not. The next surprise came from Brazil, who managed to stop the unstoppable Canadians. Brooks, Yago, he made oh. the last one and he makes that one. He gives Brazil a four-point lead. Italy and Puerto Rico fought for the first ticket to the playoffs. Puerto Rico kept the game close through three quarters, but the Italian veteran Luigi Tatome said, I'm not retiring yet, and hit some key three pointers. The boards. Tatome threw in the corner. Gigi! Called it. Tatome quick three, and again, a quick response there by the Azuri. Then Italy pulled away and closed out the decisive game 73-57. The second playoff ticket from this group was up for grabs in the Serbia-Dominican Republic game. Right from the start it seemed like the Serbians were there to avenge their last loss and oh my how they did it. 112 points, 23 point difference and most impressively, listen to this, 85% in 2 point field goals. That's just unheard of. Now, Boggy pulls up for three, hand his face, toy got time by Bogdanovic. Right, so Serbia and Italy both advanced to the quarterfinals and got placed in these spots. Now, the situation in Group J was different and I won't expand on the meaningless game between Montenegro and Greece. There were still questions in this group and the most important one was if the US will stay undefeated and come to the playoffs as the first seed of Group J. In their way was Lithuania who had the best 3 point percentage in the tournament coming into this game. But geez, I don't I don't think Steve Kerr and his staff could have prepared for nine threes without missing in the first half. Balatunas lets it fly for three! Over to Karinauskas for three, good! No look to Dimsha, wide open from the corner, good! What's even crazier to say is that Vidas Karnauskas became not just the most unlikely hero of the game, posting up Austin Reeves, but also was trolling after the game by wearing Team USA cap.
This was literally the second time Lithuania beat the USA when they had NBA players and you know what, screw being neutral, I'm wearing this jersey for the rest of this recap. The outcome of this game meant that Lithuania would face Serbia while Team USA would play Italy for the semi-final spot. The first place battle between Slovenia and Germany was actually quite important, providing a relatively easier path in the playoffs. And oh my, how dramatically did that game start? Slovenians opened the game so strong that Dennis Schroeder started arguing with both Daniel Tice and his head coach. Hey, let's go! Fuck, sit down! Let's go! Sit down! No, you tell me what to do. Sit down! I got time out! Let's go! But maybe a little fight on the bench is what Germans needed to ignite themselves as after trailing 11 to 25 after the first, they went on a crazy scoring run and ended up winning the game by 29 points. Nearing expiration, Schroeder changing gears through traffic to his guy Tice. That meant that Germany would come into the playoffs as first place and Slovenia as second. Both of Group L's matches also determined the advancing teams, starting with Brazil and Latvia where at the half it looked like we're in for another nail-biter, but this Latvian fairy tale just keeps on giving. Steps back, it's fouled, M1! Latvia won the third quarter 36-21 and ultimately won the game 104-84. Finally, the last game of the day was Spain-Canada. Spain looked like they are controlling the game and were going to keep their hopes of defending the World Cup crown alive. But the Canadians led by SGA came back in the last quarter. Takes Claver. He's open at 2 oh, And Canada with their first lead! And then, when it really felt like the game was over, the Spaniards did what they always do and kept themselves in the game until last seconds, with Alex Abrines even getting a semi-open shot to send it to the overtime. To tie it! Oh, Ooh. it's the front of the rim! Well, Canada, book your tickets, you're going to Manila! So, to wrap it up, all the matchups of the quarterfinals became clear, Latvia matched up with Germany, and then the two potential MVPs would battle it out in the Slovenia-Canada game. We've reached the single elimination playoff stage of the World Cup, which started with the quarterfinals game that you could call a European basketball classic, Serbia versus Lithuania. Lithuanians started the game shooting well, but couldn't stop Bogdan Bogdanovic and others getting to the rim. In the second quarter, Bogdanovic not only kept scoring in the paint, but also started hitting threes, telling his teammates to stay calm after one of them. Here is Bogdanovic for three! Hey Jeb, what a shot! Although it hurt seeing my countrymen getting eliminated after such a historic win against US, the Serbians were just a better team that day and hats off to them. And you know what, I'm still very proud of Lithuania as before the tournament I didn't even see them making the quarterfinals so this is definitely staying on. In the postgame presser, Bogdanovic revealed that he was inspired by Boris Asimanic who lost his kidney after suffering a horrific injury versus South Sudan. Our teammate who is still with us, Boris Simonic. He was, <laughs> guys, I'm good, don't worry, let's win tonight, this is for him as well. Now, the quarterfinal matchup of USA and Italy had a few interesting angles. First of all, the Italian Basketball Federation and Paolo Banquero had some beef after he chose to play for the USA instead of Italy. Secondly, Team USA got memed really hard after losing to Lithuania in an embarrassing way. Less than 3 million oh, yes. people and they beat us! <laughs> but hold on a second There's more here. people than that in Chicago! What was their response? How about coming out the gate with the highest level defensive intensity that completely shut down Italy's offense. While in the first quarter Italy looked like they could at least compete, that was very short-lived. And by the middle of the third quarter started looking more like an all-star game. Procedo, what are you doing? And the alley -oop! And Bancaro! The second day of the quarterfinals started with the return of Germany's Franz Wagner, who faced off against the tournament Cinderella Latvia. 
The German star only played in the opening game of the World Cup, having missed four games in a row prior. Latvians one more time defied all expectations and started the game against one of the tournament favorites, winning the first quarter by three points. Huge part of that was Davis Bertans hitting one three-pointer after another and showing why he's called the Latvian laser. It's Christian Zordix who's checked in and has it. Davis Bertans! After going toe-to-toe -to -toe in both second and third quarters, Germany, or more specifically the Wagner brothers, went on a 14-1 run, building a 14-point lead. But the Latvians wouldn't be Latvians if they didn't manage to come back from a double-digit deficit, just as they were down 11 against France, or 12 versus Spain in the fourth. And I don't think I need to say much more in this situation, just watch the ending yourself. Schroeder misses Lafayette, have it! They've got a chance to win it! Bertans! Oh, he had it! They follow! Germany are gonna survive! Thomas Bertans had a game-winning three-pointer! I'm sure everyone in Latvia must have felt like Kristaps Sporzing is here when watching those last possessions. Anyways, as sad as it is that Latvia's fairy tale ended, they were definitely the biggest surprise of the tournament and Latvians should be really proud. On the other side, Germans must have felt pretty lucky winning this game with Schroeder, who yes, made some key plays in the fourth, but overall played a disastrous game going 4 from 26 from the field. Then it was time for the so-called battle of the MVPs between SGA's Canada and Luka Slovenia. I think Dylan Brooks is the perfect player to put on Luka if you wanted to frustrate him and that's exactly what happened. Right from the start Brooks was in his face and even received an unsportsmanlike foul for his physicality against Zoran Dragic. Despite that Luka wasn't happy with the refereeing and besides constant complaining also was showing the money gesture towards the FIBA executives. The crowd agreed with Luka and were cheering him every time he had the ball while Brooks got booed but let the crowd know he loved it. Brooks to the left knocks down the three and, and then blows kisses to the crowd. While Slovenia managed to make some runs and keep the game alive in the fourth, SGA made sure Canada stayed ahead. But if I'm being totally honest, all I remember from the fourth quarter was Dylan Brooks getting ejected and the Slovenians complaining to the refs. Those complaints led to another ejection when Luka got his second technical. Doncic gets in the paint, puts it up, goes down, hoping for a foul. And now he's been teed up and he's gone. Fun fact, after the game, Luca asked to be in the press conference, even though he wasn't even scheduled to be there at first. And his message was this. I know I complain a lot. The referee told to one of the guys, we're not going to call a foul on him because he's coming at us. But this is, I don't think it's fair. Canada eliminating Slovenia meant that Germany and Serbia now clinched their spots in the 2024 Paris Olympics as the two best European countries. So we were left with these two semi-final matchups, USA vs Germany and Canada vs Serbia. Serbia vs Canada was the first of the two and it didn't take long for it to become interesting. First, the self-proclaimed best perimeter defender on the planet Dylan Brooks got his third foul when trying to prove he's also the best post defender against the Serbian center Nikola Milutinov. Milutinov quickly became an unsolvable problem for Canadian bigs. Pass, Milutinov. To make matters worse, SGA, who was already struggling, had a very unnecessary foul when reaching for a steal at the end of the second quarter, leaving him with two fouls short of fouling out just before the second half. Although Brooks's two three-pointers inspired Canada's sport in the third quarter, soon after he received the fourth personal foul and was forced to sit on the bench. The Serbians took advantage of that and finished the quarter with a double-digit lead. And they didn't stop there either, starting the final quarter with a bang. With three fouls, four fouls for Olenek and four for Dylan Brooks. And now the steal from Abramovich! Canada's head coach Jordi Fernandez was frustrated to say the least. If we have to go, we're gonna go swinging! No quitting! The whole eight minutes! Fight together! They definitely heard their coach and got back to a 10 point distance, but Boggy said it's showtime and closed the game with this crazy sequence. Here's Bogdanovich again. Oh my goodness. Bogdanovich from the left. Oh boy, that is a dagger. Serbia reached the World Cup final after a nine year break. Later, Bogdan revealed that Avramovic really did his homework. Alex Avramovic, who was watching his tape for last two days, highlights every game. He said, trust me, I'm going to steal one ball. And I think he stole two. 
The second semi-final between the United States and Germany was something else. But maybe that's to be expected when you have 8 out of 10 starters playing in the NBA. I think from the very first quarter we saw a foreshadowing for the whole game. The Germans were matching Team USA's tempo and their 5-out offense and off-ball movement converted into open threes or finishes at the basket. Schroeder goes downhill, gets it to the corner. Franz Bachner gets in! A little bit of... Both teams put up a scoring clinic in the first half, which actually broke the highest scoring first half record in FIBA World Cup semifinal history. I probably was expecting that Germany would tone down their scoring tempo, but the Americans couldn't stop Andy Obst, who scored 10 points in the third quarter with his signature off-ball movement, which drove Americans crazy. Oh, he got Halliburton off his feet. And that is three free throws. And they carried their struggles defensively into the fourth, as they either couldn't get a stop or couldn't score after one. Germany kept their lead and were up by 12 points with 5 minutes 23 to go. That's when Ant took responsibility on his shoulders and closed the gap with a crazy dunk and a clutch three. Edwards flies in! Edwards looking for space, he puts up a three! He cuts it to three! With the help of Reeves, the Americans managed to cut the deficit down to one point with 1 minute 35 left, but then Obst, he did it again. Oh, there he goes! Obst! The final nail in the coffin came from Schroeder, or so it seemed. Schroeder steps back, count it! Is there enough time for the USA? 38 seconds, Reeves! He puts it up! He misses, but Bakero with the rebound. He misses. Reeves gets it. There and it is. gets to Schroeder. He throws it up, and the Germans have done it. The Germans joined Serbia in the World Cup final that happens to be European, while Team USA and Canada would battle it out in the North American match for the bronze. Speaking of which, JJJ, Paolo Banquero and Brandon Ingram were out due to illness, but the internet didn't buy it and called it load management. The intensity of the game also reminded of the NBA regular season, as Dylan Brooks was casually hitting 5 of 5 three-pointers in the first half. Dylan Brooks, you can count it! Also similarly to an NBA game, defensive intensity picked up with about 7 minutes left to go, with Team USA coming back from a double-digit deficit. And then when it seemed like Canada had the bronze medals in the bag, Mikal Bridges did this. Oh, a good miss! The USA got it! Bridges from the corner! You have got to be kidding me! Unbelievable! A play for the ages at the FIBA Basketball World Cup! Bridges does the unthinkable! Ties the game! Unfortunately for him, in the overtime, Canadians not just won the game, but SGA got Bridges on skates. New 14. Lastly about this game, I never thought I would hear MVP chants for Dylan Brooks, but the Canadian villain really deserved it with the most points in the medal winning game in FIBA World Cup history. I guess that's my persona, the villain, just on the court, but you know, I'm a loving, caring guy who loves my kids, you know, love my family, you know, love my teammates. Just love the world as well. And now we have arrived at the grand final between Germany and Serbia. Right from the start I knew this game would be added to that FIBA Classic Games playlist, as we saw incredible defense and even better offense. Nikola Jovic quickly the other way for Serbia, he drops in and he throws it down! <laughs> Unfortunately for Serbia, Ognjan Dobrić was helped off the court with only about two minutes played. That's when other Serbian players besides Bogdanovic and Jovic knew they had to step up. Petrusev gets in and for the dunk! Germany, on the other hand, were relying on their leaders, Dennis and Franz, who led their team to a 12-point lead in the third quarter. Franz for three! Franz Wagner! In the fourth, Alexa Vramovic proved that he isn't just a one-night star, dragging Serbia's offense on his back and catching up with the Germans with under two minutes to go. Avramovic for three. It's good! 
In crunch time, Marco Guderich missed a wide open 3 from the corner and then couldn't finish an end one play, which were two crucial missed opportunities. The game's destiny went to Dennis Schroeder, who delivered the final blow and secured the MVP award. Or try to win it with a 3. Schroeder gets in, he goes fast! I don't think they were ready for that! 83 to 77, Germany beat Serbia to win the world title for the first time. That award is going to Dennis Schroeder, who gets this award. Look at this. <laughs> And there it is guys, Germany is the 2023 FIBA World Champions. And don't say I didn't tell you that before. If I'm honest, Germany is my dark horse of this tournament and I won't be surprised seeing them going far. Also, another interesting fact is that they finished 18th in the previous World Cup, which was followed by 3rd place in the 2022 Eurobasket and now this title. My most memorable moment after the final was Germany's head coach Gordon Herbert just taking a moment. Look at Gordy Herbert. He needs to uh, get the ticker to slow down a little bit, I think. I guess that just shows how much energy it takes to go undefeated in the World Cup. It also took a lot of energy from us, so I hope you enjoyed this video and also our coverage of the FIBA World Cup this summer. Of course, the best way to show us your appreciation is to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also check out basketnews.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.